Sampling represents one of those areas where the difference between small-scale marketing projects and other academic marketing research is most pronounced. In small projects, you do not have time or other resources to collect large quantities of data. By default, you are looking for a small subset of population, say 150 respondents, and these respondents tend to be consumers that are easily or conveniently accessed. In this video, I will try to separate sampling theory from sampling practicalities in small marketing projects to help you carry out your dissertation research. We will begin the discussion of sampling by considering the thinking behind sampling. Sampling means that instead of asking questions of the entire population, we somehow select a group of respondents and base our conclusions about the whole population on that group. For example, to understand consumer loyalty, we don't tend to gather data from all and every consumer in the world, but from a sample of that population. Of course, the larger the group, the more trust we have in our findings. And yes, sometimes we ask entire populations. In the UK, for example, government carries a population census every 10 years. Population censuses are expensive and rare and difficult to carry out, and we use sampling to reduce the difficulty, amount of time and amount of resources required to collect data. To understand sampling, you first need to be familiar with some basic concepts, and the two most important concepts are population and sample. The term population refers to the entire collection of people to whom the findings are supposed to apply. The term sample is used to represent a subset of the population. The key consideration in sampling is that the sample represents the population accurately. An element or unit of analysis is a single entity in the population, for example, individual consumer. Finally, a stratum is a subset of elements from the population that share some characteristics. In the population of the students at the University of Glasgow, for example, we can distinguish a male and a female strata. Of course, we can identify many multiple strata and they may overlap. For example, male and female students can also be undergraduate or postgraduate students. Finally, the term census refers to count of all elements in the population and the situation where all elements of the populations are actually measured. To generate trustworthy knowledge and information, sample has to be representative of the population. It has to represent population well. Suppose we would like to examine the relationship between trust and loyalty and we sample mostly young consumers and we find little effect between the two constructs. The over-representation of a specific part of the population can weaken the study findings. Perhaps the strong effect of trust on loyalty is less apparent in young people. If our sample had been more representative, we might have found a stronger effect and our results would not have been biased. There are different ways in which a sample can be drawn from a population and will be distinguished between probability and non-probability sampling. For details of those sample methods, I will refer you to your textbooks. However, I will say that the best samples from the point of view of theory and knowledge generated are those where all elements of the population have the same chance of being included. In essence, best samples are probability samples and specifically random samples. Saying that, random samples are rarely found in academic research and marketing specifically frequently uses convenience sampling. Projects you are likely to carry out will also rely on convenience sampling and you may use snowball or quota sampling. Convenience sampling occurs where you select respondents that are most convenient or most accessible. For example, select people in a shopping mall. In a snowball or referral sampling, you initially recruit a small group, for example, snowboarding enthusiasts, and then expand the sample by asking the initial participants to provide contacts for possible new participants. I will finish by reiterating once more that you are carrying out a small research project in marketing and that you will typically use either convenience or snowball sample. Furthermore, you will typically collect data from a relatively small sample of 150 plus minus 50 respondents. 
Of course, the larger the sample, the better. And small samples are no good because they prevent you from carrying out data analysis. What is small? You need at least 25 respondents to perform the simplest form of univariate data analysis. For your results to show competence and for you to use more than one type of analysis on one variable, the number of respondents has to exceed 100. 